a very good job, well done, as another great clan battle. And a premier clan on top of that both managed to make history here amidst combat this afternoon. I believe the phrase two birds and one stone fits the bill here rather astutely. There's another clan present that seems to be very gracefully balanced between a lot of experienced players, as it should naturally be expected to a pretty good degree, while not having any overpowered players respectively. Which is like, neither team had those key or ideal players that always end up having to carry a team, whether or not it's realized or it's expected for the one or two people to always have that much pressure put on them in order to carry a whole clan. When the whole clan has to have equal contribution to the clan's actual success rate or rate of success. Everyone here had an equal contribution to the general team effort on both sides, Havoc and the Alliance both through the whole clan battle and that right there is very good as that gives players more hands-on applications in the teamwork field and it speeds up the process of their own acquaintanceship of the atmosphere of combat especially for those who still aren't fully used to the clan scene or to the general changing environments of a clan scene so let's settle into our revision starting into round one which was the capture of the flag which was on uh, Havoc's host, I believe. Here, this was a five versus five. Cat Flux, I believe, was able to finally join us in on this one. WCW Spunk, or Cat Flux as known now, Cat Flux, using the alternate account for the AOC, which is the AOC Stratosphere. He was able to finally settle in and join us in totality for this clan battle, and so I couldn't be more blessed to have him along in the Alliance. It's good working with him again. Here, the, the idea for the Catch the Flag outline by him and Venom both was able to generate some prosperity in of the Alliance's favor, but Havoc was able to advantageously capitalize every single time a move was made. In addition to this, there was a number of points where there was a lot of mass disorganization on the Alliance's part in trying to successfully sustain flag capture or flag defense again i got on the case about you always need to have somebody back at the headquarters in order to make sure that people don't just walk right in and take the flag but that's what had to happen everybody here played offense rather than somebody or some bodies playing on defense and so the fault of this being a five and zero straight flush falls on aoc more so than on havoc's general domination of the gameplay that's the only negative point I can actually point out about it was just that there was a lack of coordination and coordinated follow through for most of the clan battle. Not all of it, but for most of the clan battle. There are some points where, where when AOC did make a capture, there was some coordination that started to settle in as it was a lot harder for the enemy to try to come at us in order to get the flag runner. Here, though, is where the mindset needed to stay, that the medic has to stay with the flag runner, which was not settling in that well, but that's okay. Because it's all, it's your first gig as the medic, and so that's understandable that it could be a little rocky trying to understand who to, who to shadow more. You want to either shadow the one that's trying to get your flag back, or do you want to shadow the flag runner you got that already has the enemy's flag? And you got to kind of switch and assess the judgment correctly on who... To be around most and then once a key move is made who do you stay shadowing with the most in order to keep your response time pending and make sure that you're out of the way that way you don't die and your host doesn't die but you also leave yourself somewhat open that way the people that are coming for the flag runner also kind of see you so they kind of want to try to get to you before they get to them because you're the key to him being alive which is the exact opening that your host needs to capitalize on to keep the momentum in your group's favor our favor and that's okay it's all a part of the learning process that one there capture the flag was lost at a five to zero it was in the havocs that was in clan havocs favor next into round two that was conquest here on Conquest, I could say was a very good potential highlight of the clan battle. 
Momentum was shifting back and forth, and it started originally in the Alliance's favor right out the gate. You guys went with the buddy system, and in addition to the buddy system, you stayed on the double capping method. And I like that, because you stayed smart. You didn't try to play the power game, you played it smart, which allowed us to keep in tow with the points that were tallying back and forth as the score went back and forth in both groups favor and i like that good job out there it was a very intensely fought game out there on launch as center node for b was always being contested either or nodes in back for a or c both kept going back and forth depending upon convenience but b ended up being the most contested every single time also in addition to this captain duck i do appreciate the idea of what you and Cat Flux did in terms of learning the double sweeping method very quickly, which was a past training ideal and practice that I was trying to slowly embed to you guys once upon a time. That way you guys can get used to that. So rather than there being a medic and a sentry, do a double sentry. That way you can go full tactical aggro, tactical aggression which was what we were slowly establishing here. And so I'm very proud of what the both of you did out there. And last but not least, we also go into round three, the team deathmatch portion of the session, which was on the Alliance's hosting, which panned out very good here. This one was upgraded from a five versus five to a six versus six, which is what Golden Prime and Venom had proposed that they had wanted to do. And so Grimwave went on ahead and followed through and allotted the five, the six versus six upgrade. That way we could have a sixth person, which would be uh, Dinobots coming back in or Grimwave coming back in. And then um, we can just let uh, J Camps have, be the sixth substitute player for Havoc at this time. Granted, no, he's not a Havoc player. And so this would be a substitution that would occur. And that's all well and fun. It's just that they all wanted the general upgrade to a 6 versus 6 because there was one, one person that was leaving, another person that wanted to come back in or tag back in for this round. So I went on ahead and went on it. I went ahead and allowed the 6 versus 6 to happen as Grimwave also wanted it to happen. So we had the 6 versus 6, and it ended up being another very closely fought game for all intents and purposes, as there was a lot of good teamwork factors that played into here. Flux was able to try his hand out at the medic role again. Uh, this time around, what I did was take the sniper role in the team deathmatch portion of the clan battle and try my hand out at a little bit of sniper support, which was unusually highly scouted in advance by the enemy Titan players. <clears throat> oh, my bad. Um, not Cat Flux this time around. This was uh, Dinobots25, because this was his second clan battle. And this was his very first time trying out the medic role in a completely serious tone and a highly competitive environment. And so he played to, he played his role as effectively as I believed that he could do. And he did very well. As his general response time as the medic, while average, slightly below average, steadily increased as the clan battle intensified. And I like that sudden change of events because it allowed his true potential to slowly reveal itself. And he went from being adequate to being just at average, slightly above average. And I can see that it can go even higher than that, as long as he continues to apply himself appropriately and continue to try and work beyond your means, but still somewhat stay within a comfort zone or within some sort of an established comfort zone. My test here for him was to do the medic role as effectively as you could and to try to focus on the majority of the team but not everybody on the team. Case in point, I wanted to make sure that he would heal everybody except for me since my role here was to be the sniper support and to just go around trying to snipe people. I wanted him to make sure that he could get to everybody else excluding me because I'm going to be that guy that's off to the side. So if I'm seen, just consider me as generally a dead player because there wouldn't be any chance of the medic getting to me in order to help me get back up on my feet without me dying and him getting away or us both dying and both points are lost to the opponent. But there were in some intervals during the clan battles portion of Team Deathmatch where he was even able to get to me. And I was... hmm... 
I was really impressed by that because the response time was good all around if he was able to keep health consistent with everybody and still get to the side dude. I like that. That shows a lot of very good potential with a very speedy response time. All things considered and all the revision taken in tow, I feel the clan battle here was an astronomical success. And I look forward to whenever it is that AOC and Havoc can lock it up again in combat. It's very rare nowadays that two clans can coexist on the same general combat level anymore because there's always going to be that one clan that's going to have a clan full of overpowered players. It's where it's going to be vastly easy to get wins and get kills, but you can also have a lack of coordination. And then you have another team that's going to have the lack of overpowered players and has to learn how to be coordinated or you have to learn to trust your teammates. You have to learn to believe in what you're doing and believe in what your teammates doing and you have to learn to trust them that they got your back and that you guys can always do team kills or you guys can always work together as a team thus the embedment of the buddy system which so far seems to be taking in very good effect with the alliance and its general efforts in matching a good clan and in matching greater clans yet to come so good games all together and let's make sure to see that we can get to AOC and Havoc 2 in the future. You guys have a good one ahead, and as always, till all are one.